everybody, it's Candace with Grow Local. And guess what, guys? We made it through the summer. Woohoo! And the rain's coming, so I might be a little damp by the time we're done this one. However, I am here today to say that I hope you had fun. Your garden should be winding down. Um, and as they do, once you're taking things out, just remember your housekeeping. Remember to take out all the old bits and compost it, okay? You want to do your house cleaning. Mulch where you need to mulch. If you're like me and you've got a small garden, you can just mulch with, with your straw. I don't usually add any fertilizers or amendments until the spring. I don't find it necessary. And a lot of times I still have a lot of stuff growing in there. I've got the kale. I will be taking the last of my beans down after this. There's Roma tomatoes back here that I'm gonna be picking really soon. I still have peas growing in the back. I've got some dragon tongue beans that are still coming up. And I do have a renegade sunflower here. And behind it is my pineapple sage, my absolute favorite, not so much for eating, but because it's one of the last plants to get flowers in your garden and the hummingbirds just love it. If you have a larger garden and you're taking a bunch of stuff out and you want to amend the soil, you want to get it more tilth, you can use uh, a crop cover called buckwheat. It grows really fast. Within about three to four weeks, it's come up, you chop it down, you dig it in, and it gives you lots of tilth. If you think you need a bigger shot of nitrogen, a lot of people will use fall rye and legumes. And here comes the rain. <laughs> and it works really, really well. It takes longer to grow, but about three weeks before you want to plant, you would cut it down chunk it all into your soil, turn it all over. It starts to decompose and adds a lot of nutrients and a lot of tilth to your soil. And what else can I tell you? That's probably it. Just make sure that you clean up. If you've got things with powdery mildew or downy mildew, remember to put them in the garbage. You don't want to put those into your composter. And start harvesting things like your sunflower seed heads. They should be about right. When the back's really, really brown, that's when you want to cut them. They will droop towards the ground, and that's a preservation thing for them. They don't want the birds to eat them. They want their seeds to drop down to the ground. One other thing, growing garlic. This is the time to plant your garlic, September and October. Easy peasy to do, you guys. If you saved some of your garlic, all you're doing is pulling off the cloves. This is called the foot, the part that's attached to the bottom. It's got a pointy end and a flat end. You want your garlic cloves to go in about four inches because you want about two inches of soil on top of the clove to protect it from the weather. Now, if you're like me and you want to teach the kids farmer measurements, you just measure your hand. For me, the top of my knuckle is four inches. So all I do is go into the soil four inches Bottom end down. Cover it up and I'm done. That should be ripe and ready for picking and pulling in July. And that's all there is to plant in your garlic. There's no muss, no fuss. If you're going to try anything, try your garlic. A lot of the local uh, garden centers have some in stock right now. At the farmer's market, you can pick them up. So, and there's a lot of different ones to try. There's really hot ones, there's really mild ones. You're still gonna have fun, even though the summer's over. I do hope that you had fun going through this little adventure with me. It was a real learning curve, um, trying to figure out what you'd be interested in, what might strike your fancy, and for me, how to not keep moving my hands around so that you guys can actually see stuff. Um, if you have any, I wish they had ideas, please just email them into Grow Local and maybe we'll get a chance to try this again next year, okay? Thanks everybody, it's been a slice. Woohoo! Hi, it's Candace with Grow Local again. And I know I talked to you about doing the straw bale planting and I don't know if you tried it this year or if you're interested in it and you're going to try it next year but if you've a mind to if you've already planted your bales you can still get more use out of them by using them as a cold frame 
just drag them together. If you've got four to make a square, I'm just showing you with the three, it's just easier to see what I'm talking about. But you would just line up your straw bales to make a nice square. And then if it's winter time and you've got other product, like other plants that you know aren't gonna overwinter very well or they need the extra protection, like your new um, rosemary or your base, a lot of times they need a bigger, more substantial root ball before they're gonna be winter hardy and able to stay out in your garden all year. Uh, and typically, if you don't want roots to freeze, you need to have a pot that's at least 18 inches wide by about 18 inches deep, okay? And that's where this comes in really handy. I can put pots in that are a lot smaller. These are, they've gotta be some of the world's best insulators going. So if you had your four bales, you could put an old window frame across the top. You can put your reme across the top. If it's water that's gonna concern you the most, because like with um, your Mediterranean herbs, like your oregano and your, your rosemary, it's usually the water that gets in more than the cold does. So you might wanna put a piece of poly over the top. And again, if your plants are too tall, you can just use your infamous stick, put it in, put your pipe across the top and use your remake and you're making yourself a little hoop house, okay? or you might just want to peg the reme straight across the top. It's really easy to do. And then it also gives you a little bit of a head start in the spring if you're going to replant these. All you have to remember to do is water them really well, add a whole lot of nitrogen, like blood meal and bone meal, to get these things going, to get them started. Because there's not really any nutrients in the straw. But there's not any weeds either, so when you're mulching, Mulch with, with straw, not with hay. Otherwise, you're going to have all sorts of strange things growing up that you didn't want. And that's about it, you guys. Um, if you have the four and you're using it as a, as a cold frame in the springtime when it starts to warm up, if you take out the south-facing bale, oh, look at that. You just made yourself a little mini greenhouse and you can get a, an even bigger start on some of your other groceries that you're going to be growing. I have a bag full of straw here. If you want the square to be bigger, you don't have to butt the ends up. Ah, it's heavier than I thought. You don't have to butt the ends up like this. You can have them the way I had them. And then just put your, your bags of leaves that you want to compost and use in your garden in the spring. Okay, for leaf mold or leaf mulch. Now I'll say that's it. Thanks and bye. I have a straw bale back here, and I don't know if any of you have done straw bale plantings or even heard of it, but it can, it's got a lot of uses and it can be a lot of fun. Um, I did it several years ago, and it was a two year process, and I wanted to see if it worked, and it was for me highly successful. I had a plot along by a fence, and it had no soil. It was close to the highway. <laughs> And I was given just this little hill strip. So what I did was I did the straw bale planting. It was the first time I tried it. And what you start out with is a straw bale that looks like this. And you put it so the strings are at the side. And you got all this stuff up here. And for a week and a half to two weeks, what you are going to do is just water this guy. Get the hose out and just water it, water it, water it. It starts the decomposition starting or it starts the decomposition and it heats up a lot. So if you weren't to do that for a week and a half to two weeks, anything you plant in there is just gonna cook because the temperature just gets way, way, way too high. Um, there's no nutritional value in your straw. So when you are watering, add something high nitrogen. Um, blood meal, you can, add, you can put in just regular all-purpose fertilizer, but do that almost every time that you water. When you're finished doing that, you've got a lot of options. You can either just pile some garden soil on the top. If you're putting something in from a pot, this will be loose enough that you can pull out pieces and you can put the soil in there and then pop your plant in. I did it over here. This is year number two on this bale, okay? And it doesn't look anywhere near as pretty. It's getting really loosey-goosey here, but it holds the water really well. I've got, 
I'm not sure what growing out here because they're volunteers. But I've got a couple of squashes, might be a zucchini, might be a squash. I've still got some peas that we're going. A renegade sunflower, I'm going to say thanks to the birds on that one. I've got some mojito mint. And I have nasturtiums. And I don't know if you guys have heard about nasturtiums, but this is a beautiful flower. I used to use it as a sacrificial plant, which is part of the reason why I put it in here. Typically I get it covered in aphids. And when it's just chock-a-block full of aphids, I yank it out, throw it away, and the plants that I want to grow don't have any issues with them. But this year, no aphids to be found on my nasturtiums. And here's the neat thing. You can eat these guys. You can eat the blossoms. You can eat the leaves. You can eat the flower buds. They're kind of a peppery horseradish radish taste. Um, <laughs> the story I got, a woman sells these flowers, edible flowers, that's her business. And there's a sports group in Vancouver that used to get her to send them nasturtium blossoms for their barbecue every summer. So she just lovingly picked all these blossoms and she packaged them up nicely in all individual little packages so they wouldn't get wrecked. And one year they invited her to the barbecue. Well, imagine the look on her face when she gets there and discovers all of these pretty, pretty blossoms in a great big metal pan, just a great big metal bowl because the guys ate them on their hamburgers. All they do is come by with their hamburger, grab a fistful of flowers, <laughs> slam it on the burger, cover it up, and chow down. So from there on, she said she learned her lesson and she just sent the flowers bulk after that. But the whole point is they are super, super tasty. They're, they have all sorts of pretty colors in your salad. When they have finished blooming, I picked a couple of these guys off. But these are the seed pods. And I don't know if you've heard of it, but you can pickle these or just brine them. And if you go to the Grow Local site, there's gonna be two recipes up there for you soon. Um, but you just use the seed pods and they refer to them as poor man's capers. So if you like capers on your, on your salmon and salmon sandwiches, salmon, salmon on bagels. Oh, that came out so harsh. You can make your own poor man's capers doing that. And they're really quite tasty. Or you can just leave them go to seed and you've got more for next year. And going on from that, we're gonna take a walk over here. And I have taken out all of my garlic. It was a pretty good crop for me. I didn't plant as much as last year, but that's because I still have some left over from last year. This is that first one that I pulled out as a sample and I put it back in the ground and hey, it kept on growing. But it's been cured and it's been cured quite, quite well. So now all I'm gonna do are snip off the roots, make sure that that soil's more or less brushed out of there. And then I'm gonna cut it about there. I want a nice long stalk. Um, it stops the moisture from leaving the bulb. So these are gonna stay firmer longer. I think I mentioned it before where the ones that I had cut short started going soft about two months ago and the ones that I've got the long necks on, I'm actually still using. This is one that didn't get pulled early. So you can see there is a little bit of a difference in the size, but they're both gonna taste absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna leave this one dry a little bit longer as much as it looks really cured. It has been um, only maybe two days. It's just that the weather has been so crazy hot that it dried out a lot faster. Oh, good point. Some garlic, when you're drying it, um, can get sunburned. So maybe don't leave it in the direct sun. Mine stay in the sun just maybe for a couple of hours in the morning and then it's all shaded and lots of good airflow. But that's just something to know about. And what now? So this is where I had the garlic and I have taken it out. I've added a little bit of soil, but it doesn't, I'm not sure what kind of nutrients it's got in it. So I'm just gonna add some of this. And this is the all purpose fertilizer that you can use. 
so I don't have to worry about it leaching into the soil. It's going to be relatively slow, slow, slow releasing. It's going to be better for the soil in the long run. And I'll just churn up a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to sneak my way over here. I've got some Savoy cabbage. And yeah, I picked it up from the garden center. They're just starting to get their, their fall veggies in, so it's kind of nice to know. Um, I do have some started from seed. <laughs> I started some from seed, and I think I cooked it in the weather, so they didn't work for me. So I've replanted them, and I'm going to try again, but just to be on the safe side. I've got my Savoy cabbage. I'm only going to put three here. They do take up a fair amount of room, but I'm probably going to interplant it. I'm going to try a couple of kohlrabi, and I'm going to plant more carrots. So easy peasy, that's just tucking it in the soil and making sure that you really water it well for the first while. That's the kohlrabi. I can also plant Swiss chard still. And this is really pretty. If you've got flower beds and you want some Swiss chard, put it in your flower beds. It looks absolutely awesome. Nobody will ever know it's your groceries. And it's not too late to do your peas. If you want, go on the West Coast, um, the West Coast seeds. You can print off a chart. And this one is absolutely brilliant for this time of year. It's the fall and winter harvesting. And it tells me right now, August, I can transplant broccoli, Brussels sprouts. I can still direct sow my carrot seeds, chicory, cilantro, kale and collards, my kohlrabi. And it goes on like this. And then it's got wavy lines that says, hey, this is when I'm going to harvest them. So, and they also have it broken up into the winter harvest and next spring. This I'm excited about. I'm going to be where I've got my potatoes right now. They'll be coming out. I've taken out all my peas and I will be putting purple sprouting broccoli in there. We love it. That's one of our faves. Grew it, <laughs> grew it for the first time actually last year. I've eaten it before, but I'd never grown it. And so I tried it. I just went to the garden center and I just got three little plants because I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And oh, we had wished we had done so much more. But this one shows you, you can do your purple sprouting broccoli. You can either start it indoors in June. You can direct sow it in the first half of August. You can transplant it if you go to the garden center and get some in September. And then it's going to grow up to be what they refer to as a teenager. And when winter hits, it stalls out. It just stays a teenager, doesn't do a whole lot. But come springtime, when the weather warms up, that's when this stuff starts to grow. And all of a sudden, you're getting spears all over the place. And it is such good eating. There's only three plants, and we actually couldn't keep up with it. So we froze some. So how can you lose with something like that? Oh, what else can I talk about? Oh, I have left the dinosaur kale, because I just wanted you to see how huge this thing can actually get. And it's really easy to take off the leaves. Dinosaur in your Slurpees. What do they call them? Smoothies, not Slurpees, smoothies. Ugh. Or you can make dinosaur chips, or there is, there are all kinds of stir fry recipes you can use it in. You can use it for soups. I've got a neighbor that comes and gets my kale, and she loves it. I've got carrots that are growing. We planted this just to show you how long it takes. But this was one of the first crops. Remember when we did the two buckets and then planted in the garden? That's about how long it takes for these guys to even reach this side. But I also planted some in a little short bed. I'm just going to go run and grab one of those carrots because I want to show you, if it works, what happens when you've got the wrong kind of soil. OK, that didn't work. <laughs> I have been pulling these out of the short bed. And yeah, some of them are kind of crooked and they're a little wonky. But the other ones that I pulled, the ground was really rocky underneath and I had forked ones and I had 
double legs. You can get that from too much nitrogen in the soil, but I know this is because this is really rock and pebble filled soil. So hey, I got three more carrots. These, by the way, aren't insipid looking. That's the color, they're, they're your yellow carrots. They're not the orange ones. You can also get purple carrots and you can, think it's a rainbow mix, which is kind of fun. And I have peppers. This is the fish pepper. It's just starting to get some blossoms on it. It was kind of buried by the tomatoes. I also have another little pepper, Thai pepper, in this pot. And you can see I've got more peppers coming off of this guy. This one's called a fish pepper, not because they look like little fish, although they kind of do at some point, but it's because it's a really popular pepper to use in Creole fish dishes. So they called it the fish pepper. Now, the tomatoes are, they're doing fine. I'm still getting lots of blooms. And I come out in the morning and I give them a shake because they are self pollinating. But giving them a shake just helps them along. I've got lots and lots of bees. And I was looking to see, these are the black crim and they're really, really weird shapes. And they're doing pretty good. Although I did have some there was a section back here where I thought I was watering really well and apparently I wasn't. And I ended up with blossom and rot. There it is. So this is where the flower was. And it's due to poor water uptake. So that means, and I'm, I know it now, um, when I was watering, <laughs> the squash vines and the squash leaves were causing the water to pool off this way and the whole center patch around this one tomato plant was bone dry. So I've smartened up. I make sure it's getting watered properly and the tomatoes that are coming off now seem to be just fine. If you've got a nice round tomato and you've just got a little blossom end rot, you can usually just cut that off and eat the rest of the tomato if it doesn't bother you. You can also get um, wet brown spots like that that are kind of wet looking. And that's actually sun scald. So that might be something to watch for if we get really hot weather for the next little while. You can alleviate it by just covering your plant during the hottest part of the day with a sheet or something just to give it a little bit of shade. But if you do get sun scalded tomatoes, just throw them out, they're just gonna rot on you, okay? What else can I tell you about? My beans are doing well. Those are my pole beans. Those are the ones on the arch. And I'm actually starting to get little tiny beans on those. They're the ones that I'm gonna let dry and use them in my soups and stews. And I just love them. One's Borlotti. The other one I think is a Taylor, but I'm not sure because they were just in a little jar that I was saving. So they're kind of a mystery one too. And other than that, it is a jungle in here. I know I showed you all those pumpkin blossoms and all the little tendrils are grabbing onto the ground. But there, there's my start. I've got one big one. If you have a really wet area too, sometimes some people will say to lift that pumpkin and put it on some sort of a tray so it doesn't rot in the ground. I actually haven't had that problem, but maybe I've just been lucky. Who knows? Anyway, I think that might be it for the day. Um, I'm picking peas like crazy. I've picked my peas like crazy. I've composted them. I've got more peas started. I've got nasturtium blossoms that I've been enjoying and trying to get every Tom, Dick and Harry that walks down the street to try. My green beans are around the corn. I'm picking like crazy and eating like crazy. And my patty pan squashes, I've got three on the alley, got one back here and I've got three by the corn. So we are in patty pan heaven right now. And I hope your garden is doing really well this year and I hope it's a little bit crazy on you too. Thanks and bye.